in Windhelm. Which will be up here. Okay. That's where our next main quest takes place. At the end of each game turn, all players restore their health, stamina, and magicka. This completes the first game turn of the tutorial. We did it. We completed a turn. So here's the second game turn. It starts exactly where the first one started, by drawing an event card. This is the Excess Wares event, so we're going to go ahead and read it. We know this because we put these cards in a particular order when we set it up. It says, recent economic activities have had an impact on the amount of raw materials available. When exploring settlements or wilderness areas, we get to gain an additional resource. And that's active. So we'll see. You can't quite see. It's just off screen here. But we have a place for active events. We'll place it over there. Much like the previous event card, this one asks us to add a threat token. Since the world quest is one threat away from being lost, we have two on the troll threat world quest that are possible. We've got one on there already. Um, we're going to take a threat token and place it on the stronghold chart. Next to the symbol, that represents the solitude. It's that wolf face. So I'll go ahead and do that. You can see it a little bit off here. Oops. Bumped the camera there. Solitude is way at the top, meaning it's unstable now. Okay. Placing a threat token here means that the stronghold degrades. It's now unstable and the market is inaccessible. Depending on how many threat tokens a stronghold has, the effects will be different. These effects can be found underneath the stronghold chart on page 18 of the main rule book. But after the event, we can move. So let's explore a stronghold. We're going to move our player figure four spaces to Falkrith. And that's down here. So one, two, three, four. There we are. There are many things a player can do in a stronghold. We can visit a market to craft, purchase, sell, upgrade, and enchant items. And we can explore the area to meet new interesting people. Moiva, Mova, Moiva, is a social Khajiit. So she is keen on mingling with the locals. What we'll do now is called a narrative exploration. And there's more uh, information about that in the rule book. But when traveling through Skyrim, players can often find themselves meeting other people or in perilous situations. Whenever a player is in a stronghold or a wilderness space, they may choose to use their action to explore the area. To do so, draw a settlement card or a wilderness card and resolve it. So we're going to draw a town exploration card, which looks like this. Okay. And it's going to be Narentz. We know that. We've set this card aside as well. The town deck is full of characters in need of assistance. When you resolve a city or wilderness exploration card, you often find useful components along the way. This card will often first give the player a free component, and then and they'll ask for help. So here's what Narenz is saying. Help you out with some criminal? Of course. Give me a hand with this project first. We're going to gain a resource. We'll choose another plant component. So most exploration cards also provide an additional personal quest. Having a personal quest is useful as they give you a chance to gain fantastic treasures, experience, and they serve as an extra place to put threat, which will really help later on. Furthermore, due to the active event, excessive wares, you can gain an extra component, in this case, an extra plant. So we're going to go ahead and gain an additional plant component. We'll read the card, although we always already did. Um, but further down, we'll see he's asking us to craft a sturdy chain. And we need to roll a smithing check. We need a result uh, of two of these circles and to push. Um, I think we'll need to roll or just spend a plant component to push. On success, we gain two gold and a magic component or a, a gem component, soul gems, I believe. And once this quest is done, we can draw T8. So he's asking us for a skill check, that with a smithing check particularly. And these are just like combat skill tests. The only difference is that you can push as many times as you want as long as you have the necessary resources. So we're going to roll a skill test. And 
it says to set it to two triangle and one circle, meaning we fail. Again, we need two particular circles here to complete. So, but we can push. We don't have any successes. We're going to push using these plant components we found, and we're going to discard one of them, and we'll roll again. We're going to set this die to a diamond and no luck. So we're going to push again, discarding another plant component. And it says set this one again to that. We failed again. The skill test is becoming more complex than anticipated. Try once more. Discard one more plant component. And we'll set the result to what we need. We now have enough successes to help Marintz make that chain. She is grateful and is going to give us two soul gems. I'm going to see these here. Also two gold, which we'll place in the specific spot for our gold. As we can see, we've got a spot for all that stuff here on our character board. So the card also has a line that reads, um, discard a card and get T8. That icon means remove from the game, this particular icon on the bottom here with the red slash. Okay. So if we want to take the personal quest, we'll have to remove that card from the game. Otherwise we could place Narissa's card on the city discard track so that she may appear again in the game. But we're gonna go ahead and draw T8, which is a card called Ruinous Trap. Personal quests are, are very similar to main quests. You'll reach, find the same elements in the front and back. You can only have up to two personal quests at any point during the game. So we're gonna read this personal quest until we reach the line. So Narinz leads me to a ruin not far from Windhelm, where we're gonna place a quest marker on a barrow in East March. Place one of our colored quest markers on the barrow space in East March. Let's put that down here. As there are two different East March barrow spaces, we get to choose which one we want. So we're going to place it on the southernmost one because it's a little closer. We now have two different objectives represented by our colored quest markers. You can see the one in Wilhelm and the one down there in the East March area. Whenever we're in a, we wanna still explore the stronghold that we're in, however. So whenever we're in a stronghold, like we said before, we can visit the market, buy, sell, and craft, and upgrade, and enchant items all in the same turn. So we're gonna to try to enchant our dagger, our iron dagger, and make it a little more effective. So at the bottom, we'll see that its enchantment price is two soul gems. So we can see that down here. By paying these components, we get to draw one card from the enchantment deck and apply it to our item. And if we have more components, we can pay additional soul gem components to draw another card to choose from and so on until you're satisfied with the result. More about this in the rule book. Right now we only have two, so we're only going to draw one card, and we're going to spend these two here. And we'll go ahead and draw the enchantment that it tells us to draw. It's a muffle enchantment, which is going to give us sneak plus one. Normally we draw these randomly, as we just stated, but this is the one we have to pick for the tutorial. So the enchantment gives us additional sneak. Uh, when we had the item equipped, making the well-known authority on sneaking. And that is the second turn of this tutorial. We'll slide Muffle underneath our dagger. And as we do at the beginning of most turns, we draw another event. And this was called Daedric Influence, and it says a Daedric Prince is forcing their will on Skyrim, so we're gonna add a threat to each quest. 
So we have a main quest, a personal quest, and a world quest. Each one of them will now receive one threat. This is a problem because the world quest, the troll threat, already has a threat token on it, and its limit is two. By placing the threat token here, the quest has failed. So we'll move back over here to our world quest and see we've got a value of two, meaning we've busted this quest. It can't be completed now. The failure section prompts you to place a troll token on the game board in any wilderness space. And we're going to place it on the wilderness space in the reach, which is kind of way up here. There we go. There's now a troll over there. Some enemies are placed as tokens on the board, and these enemies can move around, chase the players, and can degrade strongholds. But that's far enough away. The troll shouldn't be a problem for us right now. Let's do our personal quest. We're going to move our player four spaces to the barrel in East March that has our colored quest token. And we're going to read the text below the line on our personal quest. So one, two, three, four. And here's what we have here. It says we reach one of the main chambers and the rent shows me a trap they've been preparing. I need help lifting so I can hang it on that hook. So our objective here is to lift a cage. We're going to roll endurance, and we need a result of three triangles. We can push with plant components once again. So these uh, track tests, as they're called, we're rolling our endurance. So we're rolling uh, on the track. Then we would roll three skill test dice plus any bonuses we have for that particular skill. So we roll as many dice as the maximum points you have in that specific track in this case in stamina and we have five stamina one two three four five so on a track test we're rolling our max of that particular attribute so we're going to roll five dice the difficulty is three triangles and so far we've been mostly adjusting these rolls in cards in the favor of Moiva, but it's time to show her that the world can be hostile and challenging. We're gonna set the dice to five diamonds. A one in a million roll. Unfortunately, an absolutely useless one in this case. We do have two plant components, so we could push. However, we'll need three successes and could only achieve two because for every push we make, we can only re-roll one die. Um, so as a result, we're going to fail the Ruinous Trap quest. We're going to flip that card and read the Failure section. The cage is too heavy for me. And we managed to attach it to the hook, but it seems unstable and almost dangerous. Lorenz decides to test her trap on one of the criminals I mentioned earlier. It seems like a good idea to me. So the result of failing this quest is actually adding a threat token. And this can be added to a quest or to a stronghold chart. For now, we're going to add it to Morthal. Another stronghold up here on the degradation track. This would be way up there. The quest is now resolved. So we're going to discard the card. And we're going to remove the colored quest marker from the location. That's the end of turn three. So we're going to draw another event card since we're at turn four. Right, so we've got another active event here, which makes skill tests a little easier. Uh, the mild temperature lifts the spirits and makes every task easier. Yeah. So this is going to take the place of our excessive, or ex excuse me, this is, this is actually going to take the place of excess wear. So we'll cover that up, put it in the active events spot. And with this pretty good card out, making skill tests easier, it's a good time for us to take on our main quest. So we're gonna move our figure three spaces up to Windhelm. One, two, three. And we're gonna roll a skill check here because we're entering Candle Hearth Hall. We're approaching one of the guards who is off duty and he's gonna to listen to us while we explain the situation. Right, so this is a skill test in speech. So we get to roll our base skill test combination, which is three, but we get plus one because of the perfect weather card. 
So we'll go ahead and roll. And should we fail, we can push with money, with septums. And this time it's telling us we're just going to roll it on our own. So we need a result of two circles here. We've got two money. We can push if we need to. Let's go ahead and roll. We'll roll four dice. And we succeeded. Without needing to push, we're going to flip over the list and see what happens. He agrees to honor my request. He also seems eager to do what I ask, so I give him the list. We're going to gain 3 XP. Okay. And the list that Thalmor gave me is long. I will have to use most of my contacts to fulfill the Thalmor's request. My little pawn, you disappoint me. You chose a different master. Maybe it's time I find myself a new pawn. So that is the end of turn four, and that's all the tutorial has for us in learning some of the main aspects of Skyrim, the adventure game. We have a quick overview of the main mechanics, an introduction to the story, but there's lots more rules that apply to the full game. So we're going to check the rule book out and maybe play a little bit more for the channel if you'd like to see more. Let me know. Um, but that's it. That's the end of the tutorial that you go through. We could keep playing, but there's no more cards. We have to set up different decks and stuff to get the actual game going. But I hope you enjoyed this video to get a little bit of an overview of what the game is like. And yeah, thanks so much for checking out the video and staying to the end if you did. And we'll see you next time on Save Your Game. Thanks so much. Bye.